guys, if I ask most of you who invented uh, the telephone, I think most of you say Graham Bell and you would be correct. If I ask you who invented cell phone, I thought if many of you guys know, I don't, and I can give you the reason for a minute, in a minute. First telescope was Galileo. It was through that telescope that he saw the moon of Jupiter. If I ask you who invented the Hubble Space Telescope, similarly no answer. Last one, Wright Brothers, airplane, right? Who invented the first plane, you would all say Wright Brothers. Who invented the shuttle? No answer. These systems and most large systems today are so complicated that the only way to bring them about is through collaboration of a team. Now, some people who are researchers and who, use, who like to go in a lab by themselves, three o'clock in the morning, work and you know, look at through the telescope and, you know, and all of that, and that's fine. They, they bring something to the table as individuals. But there is room for people who like teamwork. I love working in a team. I would make a miserable single researcher. I don't like, I'm a social person. I like to collaborate. I like to lead teams. Uh, and you can do amazing things if, in fact, you are, you, you know, you, you, you are, you are uh, collaborating with a team. So, unfortunately, sometimes it is said of us, Persians, who, you know, we have individual stars. We all want to be individual stars, but we don't want to be a team player. You take a look at our national soccer team. It has brilliant people because I know they play in the European system. Individually, they're good enough that they get drafted to work for a European system. But when you put them together as a national team, they haven't done all that well, right? So there is this skill of learning how to work together, how to work as a, uh, you know, as a team. That's one. The second one, people, young people often write me, either email or on Facebook, I want to be where you are right now, okay? Uh, tell me what university did you go to. Tell me what course should I take. And what I tell them, I know it is true in my case, and I believe it is true in the case of most people who uh, have done something worthwhile, is that if you look at what I know today, whatever that is, however it is in comparison, you know, in comparison to that, however that is, 95% of what I know today came after my PhD. Okay. And the reason for that is that I personally have a yearning for learning a sense of curiosity, a sense of wanting to know other disciplines. You know, when I was put in charge of this program, I was in all the Iranian high school system. I went to Riyazi, right? I went to a math track. And there were no biology, no chemistry, no geology, no, uh, you know. Um, and so when I got to my current job and I had to learn at least enough to be able to converse with the specialists who worked under me, the best biologists, the best chemists, uh, you know, the best geologists, had to learn enough of these other disciplines to be able to lead this multidisciplinary team. But so now, when I look back on my career, now 30 years has gone by, and I find out that by this sense of curiosity and wanting to learn every day something from someone, that you know, all of a sudden you look back at your career, 15 years have gone by, and you say, damn, I know a lot more than when I graduated from school. So unless you are a gifted genius like Einstein, and no one's all to, um, you know, you may be, I was talking about it myself, I'm not. You don't have to feel about it that you were not born a genius, right? You can achieve uh, amazing things if you just learn how to collaborate with other researchers, with other teammates, and never stop learning. Uh, because later on in your career, when likely 20, 30 years have gone by, 
you look back, and um, I, I think you'll be happy with, uh, with what we have done. Uh, so with that, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that you spent uh, part of your Sunday with me.